a wave. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, all. Good morning. Can you hear? Can you hear us? Okay. Loud and clear. Excellent. Excellent. Um, we got to sing "Change My Heart of God," and um, because we know this song yeah. is very powerful. Well done, um, no, they can hear you. No, they can't. Yes, they can. No, I haven't pressed the talk. <laughs> yeah, it's not on me. We can hear you. Just press <laughs> it on your end. Uh, we could hear a lot of people talking. <laughs> That's all right. Sorry, Ola. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> Sabbath, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's just great to hear you and see your smiling faces. Believe me, believe me, believe me when I say that. Hey, I'm. One way you can help us is by when you join, if you can just turn off your microphone first thing when you come on, that makes it a lot easier for us Then we don't have to monitor that we're not getting a lot of back noise as well. Today you might have seen that I have a beautiful face we haven't seen in the north for a while, Ms Charlene up there in the corner. And in a minute I'm going to change um, to spotlight her video, but... One of the things that's really got to me during all of this is, yeah, we've got YouTube up and running and we've got a Zoom and we've got Facebook, but how do we actually help our neighbour? How do we continue to be practical Christians in a time where we're locked down into our homes? So I've asked Charlene, who is the ADRA Director for Northern Australia, to come and have a chat to us about some ideas and what other churches are doing. So, um, my darling, I'm going to hand over to you now. 
Thank you and hello everybody. Well, uh, welcome to church from South Australia. Good to be with you all again. Um, I thought I'd just share just, just, a, just a couple of minutes um, just on an update on ADRA in general. Um, as you all know, ADRA was designed for such a time as this and so um, ADRA across the country has taken a keep open approach where wherever possible we're, we're trying to keep our services and projects open because our services are, are meeting the needs of the most vulnerable in our society and as we all know with you know, an expected 2 million people to be losing their jobs over the coming months that need is only going to get greater. Um, so quite a lot of our shops and, and projects have closed because we, um, a lot of our volunteers are older and um, are in that risk area. And so, yeah, some of our, our services have had to close. However, we're working um, as far as we can to encourage churches to get involved as we offer um, different ways of doing ministry. One of those is um, doing possible home deliveries during lockdown. Um, we're actually trying to get some permissions in local councils and governments to do that. So we're going to keep you informed if an opportunity comes up. But um, for those who have seen on the ADRA pages, we've actually posted. Can I share my screen, Di? Share it. Um, share my desktop. Um, so you can see this diagram. Um, these are a few ways that that you can continue to serve others from home, and and this is not it's not limited to this. These are just a few ideas. For those of you with um, different skills in different areas, look how you can help people. For example, number one, help someone open an online shop. A lot of um, the young ones um, are very tech savvy and help people who've never considered operating their small businesses online. You can actually get alongside them and help them out with that. Uh, look at number two, you can order takeaway or a gift from a, for a local business for someone else. We really have to get behind our local businesses to help them to continue wherever possible. Uh, number three, write a thank you letter. And instead of going and giving it in person, just read it to someone over the phone. It can make such a difference. We know a lot of people are suffering from anxiety and, and stressing in this time. So just being there for people that we know. Just also on this point, we have to really step out and keep an eye out for the elderly in our community and in our church community. Um, it's up to you as a church whether you spread out a list of names and numbers of people who would appreciate phone calls and people checking and just saying, hey, is there anything I can do? Is there anything I can drop off for you? Just connecting with them um, because this is going to be quite a lonely time for people who don't live with other people. Uh, looking at number four, Call someone who's isolated and talk about something other than the virus. I was walking, I live right close to the beach here, so I'm very lucky. And I was walking down the beach yesterday and every conversation I could hear was about the coronavirus and what's going on. Let's try to focus on what's positive in all our conversations. Not saying stop talking about it, but be intentional about having positive conversations. And I think that can make such a difference. Number five especially as church members, pray. We all know the power of prayer. We all know that we need to be praying more and pray and let people know that you're praying for them. Um, so these are just some ways that from your home you can continue your ministry in the things that you're doing. Um, just an update, um, our meal time on Milton Project down in Mackay, we've just been in discussions on Changing from working from a community meals kind of system, we've then switched to takeaway, but now we can't do takeaway, so we're actually looking at home deliveries. So it's just about being creative and thinking of, of different um, options and things to do to take care of those vulnerable that are around us. So I just want to encourage you all to be intentional and to really just step out and take care of each other during this time. Thank you, guys. There's some practical ways that we can change things. Thank you, Charlene. 
for doing that for us. We really appreciate you popping in all the way from South Australia to share that with us. I want to talk to you just for a second and you'll see that I've shared my page with you. I want to talk to you about offerings at this time. Um, there's a lot of people who are wanting to still remain being faithful with their tithes and offerings and we would certainly encourage that because, of course, we know the Lord doesn't need our offerings but our hearts um, need to be giving and recognising that the Lord provides everything for us and that we can give a little back. This week's offering is going to local budget. And, guys, if you want to give and if you're able to give, we would encourage you to download the eGiving app or you can go to the eGiving website or you can message Auntie Deeding, who is our church treasurer, and get bank account details so you can do a direct debit transfer. Um, you can set up BPay from an eGiving website. You can send a check um, or in the worst case scenario, we can always get the treasurer or Pastor Alfredo to come around and visit you and pick up if you have a cash collection. But you can see on the screen there, there are some church at home options for returning to God what is his. And he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. We need not fear for anything. You know, uh, Charlene was right, though. We do need to look out for each other. And so if there are any of our church family who are in need at this time, please reach out. Please let us know. Um, you don't have to blanket it all over social media, but just give Pastor Alfredo or one of the board members a call. And there is, we have ways to help you. And we can certainly do food drops. We can do toilet roll drops. Um, so just, just let us know, please. We wouldn't want any of our church family to suffer. So please, please do connect with us. But guys, it's time for the children's story. And this week we don't have anyone giving one, but I have, I have Auntie Rhonda lined up for next week. But this week I'm going to share with you a, um, one of our mission spotlight stories, if I can just get out of here. And thank you for being patient with me, guys, um, because we've got some awesome mission stories that are happening around the world and today's one is about prayer and i'm sorry i've lost my share screen option if someone wants to give me some tech support right now that would be great can you see my screen? Okay. I, can, I can see you, but not your screen. Me, that's cool. Um, go to share a screen in that uh, little green box at the bottom. I, I lost my screen. All right, I've got it back now. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Here it comes, a little story coming from Paraguay today. Guay. The native or indigenous people here occupy a number of distant villages in the northern part of the country. Life is not easy. Many communities still don't have access to clean drinking water, electricity, or basic education. Because of these challenges, my grandpa told my family that they should send me to a boarding school. And that's where my story begins. The school is located not too far from my house. It is the Seventh-day Adventist Primary, or Escuela Adventista de Caguazú. By car, it's only an hour away from our humble home. At the Adventist Escuela, I felt as if I was part of one big family. I learned how to read and write, do arithmetic, and even more importantly, I learned about a God who deeply loves me. I also learned Christian habits, such as praying before each meal. During my first school break, I got to go home and I was excited to share my new experiences with the family. As we sat down to eat dinner, I noticed that everyone just started eating. I felt someone awkward and although I was only seven, I decided to pray. So I bowed my head and offered a silent prayer of thanks for the food. Why are you doing that? 
My father yelled from across the table. We don't do that. If you want to pray and you take your food, go outside and eat alone. So I quietly took my food and went outside of our home. I sat on a log and started eating. Before long, my grandfather came by and asked, Pedrito, why are you eating outside? My dad doesn't want me to pray for the food, so I was sent out here, I answered. I could see anger rising in my grandpa's face as he rushed inside to confront his son, my dad. Why are you doing this to your son? You should be happy that he wants to pray. He has changed a lot, and you should be thankful for that. I'm going to visit that school tomorrow, and I will ask them to come to our community and teach us the things Pedrito has learned. So my grandpa traveled to the Adventist school and explained how happy he was with my behavior. He asked the school principal if he would be willing to send someone to our community to teach us more about good behavior. The principal agreed, and the school sent a pastor to our community. The pastor spent time with the people, and he taught us from the Bible for three months. Then my grandpa, mom, and 17 other people from the community decided to get baptized. And as time passed, more baptisms took place. Now, more than 40 people are baptized members of the new Seventh-day Adventist Church in our community. On Sabbaths, we sing hymns, hear Bible stories, and praise God after each inspiring sermon. Many friends from our community also come, and we pray for the day that everyone will become a part of God's big family. You may be asking yourself, how could a church be planted by a young, unchurched boy? The answer is simple. God can use everyone who decides to do what is right. Isn't God good? There's lots of fabulous things happening and it just shows how powerful prayer can be. And we're talking about prayer today. In fact, Pastor Alfredo is going to be sharing with us about Daniel's prayer in Daniel chapter 9 today. But it's now time for us to spend some time in prayer. And Pastor Alfredo, I'm actually going to ask you to pray today. And there's a few prayer points that I would like us to consider. The first is that we've just had our mission story from South America and some of our dearly beloved church members, um, our elder Lida and her husband Paco Munoz, uh, over there where Lida had gone. Do you want me to connect to the cast? And the other thing um, that I would really like us to pray for is Will. If you didn't see the live update today, there is a surgery happening at Townsville Hospital right now. Will was taken in for emergency surgery um, for work up here today. And so we need to pray for the surgeons. We need to pray for him. We need to pray for... Um, his family and his friends, because I know a lot of his friends are very concerned about him. I was just talking with some of the youth this morning. So that's the second thing. So the first thing is for Lita and Paco. The second is for Will. And the third thing that I think is really important for us to pray about today is right now in Queensland, um, the elections are taking place. These are the people who are going to be making decisions about the way life continues post this pandemic. So we need to pray for the leadership of our state that today um, we will have people come into power who will lead our state in a positive way. So welcome to those people who've just joined us. We're about to have a prayer. I'm just going to ask Pastor Alfredo if he can pray for us. Sure. Uh, just um, I would like to give you a little bit more information about what's happening. Um as you have heard, the government is organizing um, a flight to bring people from Peru back to Australia. But unfortunately, uh, Paco and Lida are not on the list as uh, they have a home, they have a house. And the first priority is for those who at the moment are Australians and are sleeping in the park or in the streets. 
So uh, Paco and Lida are not one of those. So they may be still stuck right there for a few more weeks. Uh, secondly, um, Will, um, he is um, in the hospital. Um, it is a bad news that, you know, is breaking our hearts. Um, because apparently the doctors told him this morning that he has only just a few months to leave. So um, we definitely need to pray asking God for a miracle if that is his will. So um, I encourage you, in, invite you to pray for him as well at home whenever you can. And also pray for um, his mom, because as you may imagine, she is devastated. So let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, it is so sad. The things that are happening around the world. Paco Elida has been stranded back in Peru. And dear Lord, uh, they want to come back home. So we pray, dear Lord, that you will open the door for them to make, make the trip as soon as possible. But dear Lord, we trust that that is going to happen according to your will and in your time. So we place them in your hands. I also pray for Will, Father. We pray for Will. Um, the news that we have received are not that good. And uh, he is definitely very sad this morning. And I pray, dear Lord, that you will give him the strength and the assurance that you are with him. <laughs> Father, I also pray for his mom. Um, she is definitely heartbroken, uh, broken-hearted. And dear Lord, I pray that... Um, yeah, you be with her and also give her the assurance. I also pray for the um, the elections that are happening today right now. I pray, dear Lord, that um, you are the ones who uh, are, is in control. And Father, please continue guiding this country and place in those uh, positions the people that it is according to your will. And so, dear Lord, at the same time, um, we pray for our church. And as we come together, even though we are in different places, but are happy that uh, we have this technology and able to uh, join through it together. So, dear Lord, let your Holy Spirit be with us and uh, may your blessings be felt. May you, dear Lord, uh, definitely uh, bless our church in a special way so that we may become one with you and one with each other. For we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. You know, they say that at this time, um, I've been watching lots of videos, particularly for children, but they are also the same for adults. And they talk about the importance of music and what music can do for our minds. And so Ulla is going to be leading us in another song now. And um, it's a song that reminds us of just how much God loves us. So thanks, Ulla. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Um, last week we spoke about we have nothing to fear for the future, although right now uh, we have no, no idea what the future looks like. And uh, that's him because he leaves, reminds us that we, we can face tomorrow. And uh, I hope uh, you will enjoy this song. He 
Sabbath. Thank you guys. That was so beautiful. I don't know whether you've heard um, the third verse, which seems really pertinent at this time. Um, do you know it, Ulla? Not really. We're following the, the it's not in the our latest hymn book. Ah, let me let me sing it for you because I think it's really pertinent with what's going on, particularly with Will. I don't know how. Uh, thing going. So I'll just do it a cappella so that there's no dropout. But it goes, and then one day, sing with me, I'll cross that river, I'll fight life. 
mine, O Lord, with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know how he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Life is so worth living, even if we are living in closed circumstances. Guys, hey, God is with us. We do not need to fear anything but how he's forgetting how he's led us in the past. Guys, I'm going to hand over to Pastor Alfredo now. He has a beautiful message for us this morning to encourage us. So bless you all, and I'll see you for a song at the end. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Um, it would be nice if you unmute everybody, if it's possible. Because as you know, I would like to interact with um, you people. And it's good to um, see you all. Um, I can see Memory and Rustis, the Wingships, uh, Melanie, uh, Tanil, Stephanie, Adele, uh, Rebecca, and um, also I think is Josephine, is it? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Good to see you, and Kaden, Ula, Yvette. God bless you, Yvette. I've been um, studying the book of Daniel, as we all have done this um, in this uh, quarter, and um, I came across to the, to the prayer that Daniel is praying in chapter 9. And, um, and it's, it's, it's really, you know, very touching because his prayer says uh, that he was confessing he, the, the sins of his people, but also his sins. And he is pleading for mercy. He is pleading for forgiveness. And uh, as you know, Daniel um, is not um, in Jerusalem. He is in Babylon. He is uh, being captive. He is the servant of the king of Babylon. And so um, in chapter 9, verse 13, he says, as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us. Yet we have not made our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn our iniquities and understand your truth. Let me give you a bit of um, let me give you a bit of um, um, background of what is happening. Um, it is the year 606, or around that time, and Nebuchadnezzar has come, siege the city, and taken captives uh, the cream of the cream, and also taken the, um, all the vessels, all the gold, all the silver that has been stored up um, in the palace, and also in the sanctuary. Um, this siege, this attack from Babylon, is actually the consequences of their disobedience. We find 
that in Second Chronicles 36, 15 to 21, um, the, the Bible explains that it is because they are stubborn. They have not heard God's voice. They have not followed his word. So therefore, he is going to send King Nebuchadnezzar to siege the city and to destroy them. And so here it is. The first lesson that we find is that every disobedience, every sin has a consequence. And sometimes the consequences also uh, fall upon those who are innocent. In the case of Daniel, Bible says that he was a righteous man. He didn't have to ask for forgiveness because apparently he was nothing to be accused of. And yet, because of the sin of the other people, he was suffering now. So he was taken captive from Jerusalem to Babylon when he was about 17, 18 years old. He was taken from his family, his land, and he walked about 2,500 kilometers from Jerusalem to Babylon. Um, not only he was taken from his family and from his land, from his people, but also his name was changed from Daniel, which means judge for God, to Betelchasa, which means prince of Baal, or prince of a pagan god. Not only that, he was also deprived of his manhood, and thus the opportunity to have children, to procreate, was taken from him. So much for an 18 years old boy, and yet in the midst of all this pain and this suffering, he remained faithful to God. He never stopped walking with him. He never stopped talking to him in prayer. He prayed three times a day. And because of his faithfulness, God used him in a remarkable way. God gave him visions about the future, and we call them the prophecies. Prophecies that left him confused, worried, troubled, because in the visions, he saw this power, this king, this being who will speak against God, two, will try to change God's law, among other things, also will persecute God's people. Chapter 728 <clears throat> says that the vision that he received left him with troubled thoughts and his countenance changed and he kept this matter to his heart. Then, a couple of years later, God is giving him another vision. And, and his reaction was not any better than the previous one. This vision left him fainted and sick for days. So why was he so concerned to the point to get fainted and sick? Well, first, he is trying to understand who is this little horn, this being that is going to persecute God's people, this being that is going to change the times and the laws, this being that is going to speak against God. Secondly, he understood that the captivity of the Jewish in Babylon will last only 70 years. And chapter 9, verse 2, says that he understood 
by reading the book of Jeremiah that the captivity will last only 70 years. And yet, now the angel comes and in chapter 8, verse 14, says that the, the cleansing of the sanctuary is going to happen after 2,300 days. In other words, the sanctuary is going to be cleansed, is going to be reestablished after 2,300 years. So you can understand that Daniel felt very, very concerned because in his mind, he is about to go back to Jerusalem. 70 years are about to finish. And, and he and his people are happy because they are going back home. And yet the angel comes and says, no, it's going to be for 2,300 years. So no wonder why he fainted and he was sick for days. Trying to understand the vision, um, as you can see in chapter 9, verse 2, he went to the Bible and he studied the book of Jeremiah. And then he was praying and he was fasting and asking God for understanding. And so I think, you know, we need to learn from Daniel that when we go through difficult times, and especially right now when we are going with this disease, around the world, and life is changing by the minute. See, here we are uh, doing church online because this very issue. And so this tiny little thing that is invisible to the naked eye has completely put this world upside down and our lifestyle has changed and probably life is not going to be back to normal as we knew it. So it is time for us to pray and fast, asking God for understanding, asking God to help us to see where we are in, the, in this point in time in, in, in terms of prophecies. Where are we? We need to open our Bible and I studied with the desire to understand what God is saying, what God wants for us. Um, we don't want this kind of superficial reading of the Bible. No, we would like a, a deep reading, a deep study, a deep meditation upon His Word to find out what is happening, where are we, in um, at this point in time. In verse 13, he says, this disaster is upon us, and yet we have not made our prayer before the Lord our God. This disaster is upon us, and yet we have not turned from our iniquities. This has come upon us, and yet we have not seek to understand God's truth. Are we in the same situation? That this is upon us, and yet we are not making prayer our first priority. This is upon us, and yet we are not turning away from our iniquities. And you probably are asking, what iniquities are you talking about, Alfredo? What sins are you talking about? Well, let me tell you that sin is not what we do. Sin is walking alive without Jesus. When we walk without Jesus, that itself is sin. What is it? Because sin will separate us from God. 
So it is a time that we commit ourselves to God and we seek coldness towards God. It is time for us to, to turn to our Bible to understand God's truth. We need to pray to God not only to, uh, for forgiveness, but also that we may turn from our iniquities and understand God's truth. So may God bless us all. May his blessing be upon us and he moves us to seek God in prayer with all our heart. May God move us to open his word in order to seek his truth and to get to know him better. It is time for us also to pray and fast, asking God to help us to walk with him closer than ever before. May God bless us all. Happy Sabbath. Thank you, Pastor, for your message this morning. I hope you were blessed by it. Hey, guys, it's time for us to almost be ready to separate, but it just feels wrong to not finish without another song. And so let's just um, sing a song I'm pretty sure you all know. We sang it last week in church. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie, and it's Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Let's sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace as we go away from today let's let the things that are stressing us grow dim let us go to jesus let's pray more let's get the peace of jesus into our hearts and i do want to remind you all it's really important to now be the church that means connecting with your neighbours. You know, put a little put a little note in their mailbox saying, "Hi, I'm at house number three down on the end. If you need anything, just ask me. I'm more than happy to go out and get you some food, or do a food drop, or loan you some toilet paper. Um, just you know, even if it's just going out onto the sidewalk and writing, Jesus loves you in chalk on the sidewalk. You know, ringing people who are stuck inside." There's plenty of ways that we can still be the church. We can still be the hands and feet of Jesus in this time. And I encourage you to look for ways to do that and to share ways to do it. If you come up with something, share it on the church Facebook group and, and we'll get it out. I want to leave you with this last thought before we pray. And it's this. You are not stuck at home. You are safe at home. And for us today on a Sabbath day of rest, there is no safer place to be than at rest in the arms of Jesus. And that's what he asks us to come away to a quiet place and rest. So guys, rest in Jesus. And then as we go into this new week, look for ways to be his hands and feet of mercy. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this Sabbath day. We thank you for this way to stay connected in this time of isolation. But Lord, help us to use this time to draw closer to you. And Lord, please, you draw closer to us. Again, we lift Will up and we pray for his surgery that it's going well. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to bless him, to bless this church. In your name we all pray. Amen. Thanks so much, guys. The meeting's about to close. Caden's um, about to finish the live stream. 
and it's been great to have you and stay tuned because I think there's going to be a Sabbath school program starting next week. Also check out the Facebook group for the kids. I've posted a lot of online Sabbath schools that are already happening for children and they are amazingly done. So guys, have a look at those and we will see you next week. Bless you all.